Thank you so much. I saw some firefighters in there, the firefighter auxiliary. So thank you so much. And thank you for those who served our country during this time. And welcome to TechSoup, everybody. Today is new member orientation, and we want to answer your questions today. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here. It's so much fun. I get to see you guys sometimes face-to-face -face, like yesterday, but a lot of times just seeing your questions and getting to know you. I'm going to show you on the next slide how you can engage. You are going to get this recording, and there's going to be some hyperlinks to things on the slides, so you're going to get the slides as well. We would love for you to put your questions in the Q&A. Um, Kelly and, and um, Kevin are awesome answering your questions very quickly in the Q&A. So if you would do that for us, or you can put them in the chat, we'll answer them in the chat. If you need the closed caption, somebody has already turned that on, go ahead and type, or click on the CC button at the bottom of your screen. I'm gonna move this out of the way and turn this over to Nick Finn. He is the head of global something something. He's over a lot. Nick Finn, <laughs> over to you. <laughs> well, hi, everybody, and and thank you, Aretha. My name is Nick Finn. I, I'm the head of global growth marketing at TechSuit. That really means that I wear a lot of different hats here um, because, you know, at a nonprofit, that's the way we roll, right? And so marketing covers communications, outreach, um, and uh, everything in between and beyond that as well. Um, you, you've met my wonderful colleague, Aretha Simons. You're also going to meet Kevin Mulhall and Kelly Garrett, who work with us here at TechSoup um, and handle different parts of the relationship between TechSoup and uh, the folks that we serve, you, who's on the call at the moment. Um, but um, uh, we're going to get into it here. Uh, I want to start off by just saying actually thank you to all of you who have made the decision and commitment to work in the nonprofit sector, um, almost always driven by a desire, as we've learned over the many years in my career too, uh, the desire to improve the world, make your community a better place, um, to do something beyond just simply uh, engaging in business to make money. Um, I think that there is great value in the members of this webinar who are really trying to build a civil society and to improve their communities, their country, and the world. And so thank you for making that decision in your career. Um, today's webinar is really intended as an introduction to TechSoup for folks and for nonprofits who've just joined TechSoup. Over time, we've come to learn, though, that we often get folks who actually have been members of TechSoup for some time, um, but perhaps don't have like a clear understanding of exactly what it is they can do with TechSoup, how we're helpful, what it is we can do for you. And so today is really to frame all of that up and try to give you a clear path of how to have a relationship with us, how to engage with us, and for us, how to engage with you and have a relationship with you and, and to serve the nonprofit sector, which is really the core of what our mission is. So let's start with what is TechSoup itself. And the first thing I want to point out is, like you, we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. You know, so we have to abide by the same laws that you have to abide by. Um, but it also means that right off the bat, um, we are not a for-profit technology company. We're a nonprofit. And our mission is to support other nonprofits as they learn to use technology, adopt technology, and then use it. Um, to make the planet more equitable and to improve their communities, like I was saying on the front end. Um, we do that work supporting nonprofits, not just in the United States, but around the world, in fact. Um, and we do it several different ways. One of the ways we do it is by hosting a catalog online of affordable technology products um, from major brands like global brands that you all know very well, Microsoft, Dell, Intuit, Adobe, and many, many more. Um, and uh, this catalog that we maintain contains the philanthropic offers from these companies. What that means is, for instance, if when Microsoft wants nonprofits to be able to use a product, but know that nonprofits Profits can't necessarily pay the full public commercial retail price. They make products available to nonprofits at a donated level or discounted level. It costs you less money. And of course, 
what they need is the assurance that the organization using that technology at that price point is a nonprofit. And that's what TechSoup does. So we sit between the nonprofit sector and technology companies, and we try to get the best pricing we can on these products for nonprofits to use. And then we help the companies understand that they are indeed serving the nonprofit sector. Um, and uh, that is a big complex mission, let me tell you. <laughs> Um, beyond the product catalog, though, we also, over the past several years, have come to really understand that for nonprofits in particular, um, acquiring technology is just the start. Really, a lot of the work actually is around the implementation of technology you have acquired, um, the training of staff to use it, uh, the configuration of the technology itself the selection of the right licenses to make sure you're not paying more than you need to pay for the functionality that you need to use. Um, and in some cases, it's even the exploration and understanding of what products are even in the marketplace that could be helpful to your nonprofit. Um, and so the services that we have developed over time are all aimed to help nonprofits address those various questions. Um, and these services offers from, checks, from TechSoup uh, continue to grow almost monthly. We're adding new things to the catalog in terms of services. So we'll talk more about that today. Um, we also create straight up educational resources um, to help nonprofit staff self-educate around some of the technology offers, products, and services that we provide and other large technology trends. Um, and finally, like probably all of you, we also deliver grant-based programming um, to help civil society adopt and use technology, again, with those laudable goals of building a better community, a more equitable world, et cetera. So I want to hit some key terms here that are going to matter for you as you engage with TechSoup and use the catalog or, you know, ask us to um, work with you on some of the services that we can provide. The, the first is this notion of qualified or qualification. When TechSoup talks about qualification, it's a very specific meaning here, which is that you are a 501c3 nonprofit organization, right? That you are legally and technically allowed to access the offers in the catalog. That's what qualified means. Um, some offers in our catalog are a little more constrained than to just 501c3s. In some cases, it's only nonprofits of a particular budget size or some nonprofits with a particular mission area may not be eligible. And so eligible is this other term that I wanna highlight here. Eligibility is, does your nonprofit specifically meet some kind of criteria that makes them eligible or not eligible for a certain offer? So qualification and eligibility are two key terms and you'll hear Kelly Garrett talk about that a little bit more as we get down the road. Um, civil society, which I've already mentioned, like just to have a clear, shared understanding of what that means. We're talking about the non-governmental and non-business organizations. When we talk about civil society, we're talking about everybody else who's doing work like you all on this call in 501c3s, nonprofits, NGOs, charities, whatever kind of word you want to use to describe it. Broadly, that is civil society. Um, digital transformation is another term. If you've been around nonprofit technology circles for a while that you'll hear, um, but you know, to demystify it a little bit, it, it's really about enabling and improving your nonprofits um, program delivery and functions by using technology, right? So transforming into a very digital environment, and there are lots of advantages to that. This isn't to say that every analog function you have should be digital. We're nonprofit. Sometimes it's very important that we actually have person-to-person, -person, face to face organic communication. But digital technology can be profoundly helpful um, at clearing away other tasks so that we can engage in that when it's really important. And then there's this notion of digital resilience, uh, which is really more about uh, having a nonprofit that's able to respond 
when things change quickly in a dynamic marketplace. It could be when things change quickly with the audience you serve. It might be when things change quickly with your own funding sources or you have staff changes. But one of the great advantages of digital technology uh, is that it can help you be more adaptive and, and faster in that process. Um, and so resilience is really about just like being able to maintain in the face of chaotic storms sometimes. And I think we've all experienced those moments. So now I want to dig straight into this TechSoup catalog that I brought up first and um, share with you a little bit what that actually looks like on the TechSoup.org website. Some of you who have been around for a while may have already explored this, um, so please be patient. But for some of you who are brand new to TechSoup, this may be the first time you're actually seeing it or having anybody explain it to you. Um, if you go to TechSoup.org, really on the homepage, you will see right there in the middle that Browse Catalog button. And you can also see up at the top in the navigation something that says product catalog. These are both your entry points into the product catalog that we're going to look at right now. But again, you must first be qualified with TechSoup to use that catalog. So if you have not already gone through the Join TechSoup process, which I'm pointing at in the top right-hand corner of this site, you need to go through that process. You need to sign up with your email, use your work email, and then you need to add the information about your nonprofit and go through that qualification process with TechSoup. Then you'll be able to use the product catalog provided that your eligibility does meet the things that you're looking for. So let's look at that here for a second. And um, here is what the live version of the TechSoup site looks like at the moment. Um, and you can see we've got these spotlights on the top of the page, which point you at specific things that are going on right now. Um, and if I hit the Browse Catalog button on the live site, it will take one second, and then it will take us right to the front of the catalog, right? Um, and so the front of the catalog, again, gives you like quick views of different things that you might be interested in right off the bat. Microsoft Office, Adobe Acrobat, Norton, QuickBooks, et cetera, et cetera. But I want to draw your attention up here. There's navigation for the donor. That is basically the company that produces technology products. You can go through this list here. You can look and see if there are brands there that you know build tools that you're particularly interested in. Um, if you would rather, you can also look at that catalog based by category of solution, meaning like different types of software and technology products, maybe around accounting or AI, databases, marketing and advertising, all sorts of different topical areas. Uh, and then a third item that I wanna point out, we'll come back to that, is the hardware tab, which takes you a complete to a completely different place on the site. Um, but that hardware tab is uh, a pretty important resource for folks. Um, and we will come back and look at that again. Now, I accidentally closed. There we go. I accidentally closed that. So I want to come back to this. Apologies. Maybe somebody can just let me know that you are indeed back at the slide deck. So yes, um, one of the first major brands that we are able to see uh, in the TechSoup catalog is Microsoft. And um, Microsoft has been a long-standing partner of TechSoup's. Um, they were one of the early technology partners that really encouraged TechSoup to dream big about how we could serve the nonprofit industry. Um, and uh, Microsoft has a variety of different offers for nonprofits at varying levels of complexity, but let's take a look at where that is in the catalog at the moment. Um, when you click through to Microsoft, and as Aretha said, by the way, you'll get a live version of this deck with live links and everything. 
um, when you click through to Microsoft, some highlights that you'll see right off the bat. Um, we do have a Microsoft Copilot offer in the catalog. That's Microsoft's AI. Um, I, I do need to point out to you that this is actually the public price for Copilot. There is not a nonprofit discount available for Copilot at the moment. Um, but again, you can be sure that TechSoup is having those conversations with Microsoft. And that really is one of our values in the sector is that we are always advocating with these technology companies that they need to consider the more constrained budgets of nonprofits. And so therefore think about having an offer for nonprofits um, that is a little more uh, fiscally reachable. Um, there's obviously Office 365, which is Microsoft's cloud-based office environment. You know, it's the set of uh, programs that we're all used to running, um, you know, many, many, many decades ago. Now that would have been on a CD-ROM that you loaded on a computer. You have a local version, but now this is all cloud-based, right? Um, we also have Microsoft 365, which is sort of like the larger universe of Microsoft products. Um, and then without spending too much time on it, there's a whole bunch of other stuff for Microsoft that's available here. And some of it even is donated. Donated is going to mean that the price point for you is much, much lower. Essentially, what you're paying is the TechSoup admin fee. And we do charge a small admin fee for these products because that's the only way that TechSoup can continue to function. Um, you pay basically a very small admin fee for access to that product, right? So if you are a Microsoft using nonprofit and you are interested in the cloud licensing or other versions uh, of Microsoft software, TechSoup's a great place for you to be looking at. Um, another big brand that we do a lot of work with is Microsoft. Um, and, uh, or sorry, is Adobe. Um, and I want to take us now to look at the Adobe version of what's on the TechSoup um, site. Um, if you are a design or communications professional in the nonprofit industry, um, you will see very clearly, let me also, let me just bump up this screen here and try to get rid of this taskbar, which is Mm. There we go. Sorry, it was blocking the bottom piece of the screen. Um, Adobe is, is, is one of the top sets of products for anybody who works in communications um, in the nonprofit industry or elsewhere. Um, if you are a designer in the nonprofit industry or if you are working with a designer, you've hired one, you have a contractor, chances are pretty high they're working with Adobe Creative Cloud already. And Creative Cloud contains all the applications like InDesign, Illustrator, Photoshop, and, and many others uh, that are all designed to produce, you know, basically digital communications, video communications, standalone. You can design print, websites, all of it. Um, there's a degree of technical competence you need to be using Adobe Creative Cloud. Um, so Adobe in the last couple of years has released a new product in the market, Adobe Express Premium, which is um, a little easier to use, sort of an all-in-one package of graphics and um, and copy production. It's particularly good, like think about somebody who is working a lot in social media, needs to produce fresh posts every day with images and graphics, and maybe you're doing something in Instagram, maybe you actually want to have a little bit of animation. You can schedule things ahead of time with Adobe Express, but um, it's a little easier to use than the Creative Cloud products if you're not used to if you're not used to that. You know, of course, there are things like Adobe Acrobat DC. Acrobat is um, or the is the management of PDFs, portable document format, which is something Adobe basically invented. Every nonprofit out there is working with PDFs. If you need to manage PDFs, you know, Adobe Acrobat Pro is a great way to go on that. Right, moving on from Adobe, another big brand that we'd get a lot of interest from nonprofits on in the catalog is Intuit because Intuit makes QuickBooks. And um, if the pandemic demonstrated anything very clearly, and I think it demonstrated lots of things, one was that paper and pencil accounting systems, particularly in nonprofits, are just nobody should be doing that anymore, right? As soon as people could not be in the same office environment together, those analog paper and pencil systems became worthless. Today, 
what you should be doing is some kind of cloud-based finance and accounting uh, platform. And it doesn't have to be Intuit QuickBooks, by the way. There are others out there, but QuickBooks has been historically for us one of the most impactful uh, offers in the catalog and the one that thousands of nonprofits take every year. Um, and so just encourage you to take a look at that if you're thinking about some kind of platform where you could be doing a, you know, a better job with managing your books online. QuickBooks is a great, great opportunity to look at. Um, there are a number of other brands in the TechSoup catalog, an exhausting number of brands, actually, because we have been around for decades and we have built relationships in the technology industry for a long time now. Uh, and it allows us to bring a lot of these op opportunities before nonprofits. These are just some of those brands. Um, but really, as I say, it's probably more important that you just look in the catalog yourself, see if there are things there that uh, pique your interest or would be helpful to your nonprofit. As I mentioned earlier, hardware is another big piece of what we offer to nonprofits. Um, and we have a number of different hardware opportunities to talk about. So let's click through and look at hardware itself right here. Um, so there are, of course, endless categories of hardware. Um, no matter where you're shopping for hardware online, uh, there's just lots of it out there. Um, TechSoup has mobile devices. Um, probably for most nonprofits, desktops and laptops are really where you're going to be looking. Um, monitors, networking equipment, um, even security cameras, some sensors, lots of computer accessories. Yes, there are printers in the catalog as well. And then smaller items, you know, office equipment, telecommunications, whatever you want to call it. Um, we even have these days virtual reality headsets from Meta, um, which is pretty interesting. This is more cutting edge, very now technology. Um, and, uh, you know, we're super interested in how some nonprofits may explore the use of this technology to help them with their missions. Um, it, it may not, of course, be for everybody, um, but there are some folks out there are already using it in innovative ways um, uh, as a training and education tool, particularly if it if there's like a, a job environment training um, atmosphere that you need to work with, that can be a pretty powerful tool to work with. Um, one thing that I really want to highlight about TechSoup's hardware offers um, is we do provide access to something called refurbished hardware, um, which is really uh, refurbished hardware is hardware that is not brand new off the shelf at Best Buy or something like that. But instead, it's had a prior owner, a prior user. And then there are refurbishing companies that take that hardware once once the original owners is like, yeah, I, I don't need this anymore. Um, and uh, they make sure that everything's wiped clean. I, I don't mean dust. I mean like that the data is wiped clean on the machine um, and that it has the memory and processing power, you know, to be considered uh, a current contemporary computer able to interact with the internet and do the tasks that most people need. Um, these refurbished offers are available through TechSoup. They're a great green alternative to just buying new computers every time when you need them. Um, and in fact, TechSoup was one of the leaders in promoting this refurbished uh, approach to, uh, you know, what to do, how to give hardware a second life, really, right? Um, and that comes out of our own spirit of being a 501c3 nonprofit who cares about the environment, who isn't just focused on a bottom line of uh, profit as sort of like the driving institutional force that, that, you know, we think about other things as well. And so that's why the refurbished program has been just a really important part of how TechSoup has approached hardware. So I want to encourage folks to take a look at that refurbished stuff in particular as you're, if you're looking for specific hardware options. Um, now, moving on to TechSoup services, let's talk about what you can find in TechSoup services. Um, there are a number here, but in fact, what I'm going to do now is I am going to go to a new tab that we have in the TechSoup services uh, universe. Um, we have an overview page, which we just recently published, so it's not even made its way into the deck that I'm sharing with you right now. Um, but it's uh, it's the nonprofit technology services. It's available in the services dropdown. Just go straight to this services overview page, right? 
Um, and here you will start to really find some of the really cool things that TechSoup has developed over time um, to help nonprofits with various technology functions. Um, we do a lot of work around websites with nonprofits. I've almost never met a nonprofit leader who says, my website is great and does everything I need it to. Most people are always bemoaning how their website could be better, faster, could say something differently. So we're always on this quest to make them better. Um, and so we provide all sorts of access to resources to help you build your website, to refine it, to scope out changes that you may want to make to it. Um, I want to be super clear. This is not a free service. This is a service that costs money, um, but it will probably not cost you the same amount of money as if you just went with a complete private sector uh, third party. Um, a lot of the website service work we do is with a great partner we have called the TAP Network, who specifically work with nonprofits. Um, but I, but I want to be super clear on the front end that like there is money involved here. But if you are really thinking about your website, what you need to do, I would take a look at some of the offers there and maybe engage in a conversation about how you could do better. Um, you could get IT support through TechSoup, which is really, uh, the product here is called Managed IT. It is an overarching service that we provide to nonprofits. Again, there is a cost depending on the size of your nonprofit, but it is really designed to help you manage your entire technology stack um, start to finish. Um, and, you know, it's very rare, frankly, that nonprofits have a full-time dedicated IT administrator. Most of the time, it's somebody who's actually split between a couple of different jobs. And often that managed IT support can just be the extra part that really helps fill that gap um, when you are short of staff yourself to do it, or or maybe, you know, don't actually have the expertise on staff. Um, I mentioned the QuickBooks product earlier. But also was saying that like really the task so much of the time in technology is not just getting a product. It's like, how do you implement it? How do you move your data into it? So with QuickBooks in particular, uh, we do have a service offering to help you move your data into QuickBooks online. Um, and then just, I'm going to, you know, hit on a couple more of these here, but again, just want to encourage you to look at that services drop down and click on the overview to get all of these. And there's more beyond this page, but these are the highlights. Um, you know, if you're moving to Google Analytics or need help getting GA4 set up, we can help you with that. If you need to train your staff to do a better job identifying these really dangerous and bothersome phishing emails, um, we can help you with that. Maybe you're new to the idea of having to market your nonprofit and need help building out a strategy. Are you using Google Ad Grants? There are some specific techniques that you can use to really make sure you use all the available Google Ad Grant each month. Um, lots of folks struggle with how to use that grant. It's a powerful tool when you get it, um, but setting it up again is part of the harder part of it. Um, we work with HubSpot at TechSoup. Um, I'm in there every single day. Lots of other nonprofits do. If you have adopted HubSpot and need help getting that set up, that's a service that we can also provide. Um, and then just going on, you can see more and more here, like we can help you with Windows installations. If you're migrating to Microsoft 365, we can help you with that as well. Some nonprofits are using Salesforce out there. It is not an easy thing to implement. We can help with that. Um, and then on and on and on, there are endless services from TechSoup now. And probably the best thing to really do is just start looking at this page, engage with us in a conversation on what it is you actually need help with. And again, um, rather than coming at this from the perspective of like, oh, we have a product for you, our mission is to help you. So we will figure out what we can do to help you. Um, and, uh, you know, again, like Kevin and Kelly are uh, just great examples of a lot of dedicated staff at TechSoup whose cause is to support all of you as you try to figure out what to do. Okay, so moving on from the services. Um, oh, this is just a link to the page I was just showing you. I do want to talk about what membership at TechSoup actually is about these days, and it's evolving. Um, you know, some years ago, 
membership at TechSoup really only meant that you had gone through that qualification process, that you had confirmed for us that you're a 501c3, you're a nonprofit, you're eligible to use the catalog. As the technology landscape has shifted and changed and the nature of technology products themselves has completely changed, like I was referencing earlier, there was a time when it was all on a CD-ROM and now you just download it from the internet. But even that is, that's a subscription model. And so you're paying for subscriptions rather than for physical um, objects. Um, in any case, TechSoup has implemented a more formal membership structure which we're still in the process of rolling out. Um, the very basic level of membership right now um, that costs you no money and gives you access to the catalog where you would spend money if you needed products or services, that's called DIY, do it yourself. Um, I think we're all familiar with that notion. Um, but above DIY, we have two new membership levels that I just want to drill into uh, here for a second. Um, the, the next level up is called TechSoup Boost. Um, Boost has been around for some time now. It is a $99 annual subscription for your nonprofit. But what you get with Boost is access to some deeper discounts on some products. Um, you also are getting access to a growing body of decision-making content. And what I mean about that, and this is like a really core part of how Boost is evolving and where it's going, is often the tech marketplace is so big, how could you possibly know what all the tools are that are available to you um, and how to get them and, and how to implement them? Um, Boost is the place where we are working to have all the content to help you understand what's even available to you out there and how to make decisions between this product versus that product. Um, the additional discounts and savings in Boost are very much um, seasonal, I would say. Like we get new things in there all the time, but those things are often for a limited push. Um, for instance, we had uh, some offers from um, Walmart in there recently. I'm not sure if they're still alive or not, but you know, um, you had to go through a couple of hoops, but uh, you could save quite a bit of money on some products from Walmart going through a Boost subscription at TechSoup. Um, the second membership level that we've added, actually I should call it the third because it's above DIY. So DIY, Boost, and then number three is Quad. So Quad is our newest membership level and newest offer to the TechSoup community. And what it really is, is a peer-to-peer -peer environment where we are trying to really focus on helping people understand communities of practice um, where they may, uh, you know, where nonprofits are working on similar issues together and might have the opportunity to share with each other their own experiences and findings around how technology has been helpful, what particular tools they're trying to use. Um, and uh, we're really bullish on where Quad is going. Um, it also will have the deepest dive on expertise. You know, if you think about things around AI and how important it is for nonprofits to be really be thoughtful about AI, um, you know, Quad is the space where you're going to find the deepest discussions around that uh, and the opportunity to network with TechSoup staff as well as other nonprofits. Quad is a $200 annual membership for each nonprofit. With that $200, you get like 10 quad licenses. Um, and of course, like everything in the catalog and boost you get when you're a quad member. Um, if you're just a boost member, you of course get access to all the DIY items in the TechSoup catalog. Um, but if you're only a DIY member, you get access to the catalog, but you would not have access to the boost and the quad elements, both in terms of content and maybe additional offers. So that's the different membership levels available through TechSoup. I think you'll see more information coming about that over time, um, but I did want to highlight those for you. Um, let's see, we have a new offer as well in the catalog that we're just exploring called Consultant Connection. Consultant Connection is a place where we're trying to make it easier for nonprofits to find consultants that they might work with on particular items. 
Um, uh, this is a free service, by the way, meaning that you can find your consultant and it doesn't cost you money. The consultant themselves is going to cost you money because that's the way that gig goes, right? Uh, you can find consultant connection also under that services drop down. Um, we also, as I was talking earlier about websites, we have another new service that is on that services page I showed you about providing domain names for nonprofit websites. Uh, if that's something you need help with, TechSoup can help you engage with that as well. Now, that was a lot of information. Uh, I hope some of it stuck in a way that was meaningful and helpful for you. Um, and of course, again, like you're going to get this presentation after the after the session is over and you can click through and explore stuff more on your own. But I want to bring forward my wonderful colleague, Kelly Garrett. Kelly works in the account management group, which is client services. Um, and what client services are is the your interface with TechSoup, right? and the way to manage your relationship with TechSoup. But that's very different than managing your relationship with Intuit products or Microsoft products or Adobe products or other products, right? And this is one of the tricky things for TechSoup is because we're in this in-between mode, people sometimes come to us for a level of tech support that is different than what we can actually provide. But Kelly's team can help you manage your account with TechSoup when you have questions around qualification or eligibility or something related to like a payment that's not working or somehow your interaction with TechSoup just is not producing what you need. Kelly's team can help you with that. So um, Kelly, you got it. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Nick, for the introduction. Um, as he said, I'm the Associate Manager for the Account Management Group Client Services. Um, when you're working with us, we're basically just customer service, um, and that's who you're talking to when you're getting in touch. Um, next slide, please. Perfect. So we've been talking a lot about products and services and offers that we have on TechSoup, which we do have quite a lot of, and also um, just a lot of awesome opportunities out there for everyone. One thing that we hear from our members um, at customer service is questions about the product. You know, what uh, platform does it run on? Is it only PC? Is it Mac? Um, you know, is it in stock? Uh, am I going to have to pay an, a secondary fee? Things along those lines. And most of that information we try to have on the website available for you to review and self-service. You don't have to reach out to us via our live chat to get some basic information. Um, you'll see when you locate a product, um, Nick did go through and showed you where you can find the product catalog. It's also at the top right there. You can always click on product catalog, services, community resources. That will get you into the same places. And on the left-hand side, you'll see that company drop down, the category drop down, the hardware options, which again, Nick highlighted earlier. So once you locate a product or service that you are interested in and you click on it, you'll be loaded what we call the offer page or the product page. And this is where most of the information that you're going to need is located. Um, we always have three tabs of information on these product pages. Description is what you will always um, start on. It's on the left hand side. Um, middle tab can have a different name depending on what type of product it is. Since this is a subscription product that you're seeing, it's a subscription details. Um, if it was like an access to the discounted rate product, it would have something like details and, or subscription or cost and subscription details. And then there'd be like system requirements for the ones that are just a one-time purchase or not a subscription or something like that. So middle tab can have a different name, but the one on the left, the description in the far right, rules, eligibility, and restrictions, those two should always be uh, listed the same. Um, and you make sure that you go through all three tabs of information before you click add to cart and go through the whole checkout process. Um, basically, most products and services are non-refundable and non not exchangeable. So you really do want to make sure that what you're you're buying is not is something that your organization needs and wants. Um, if it's something you're just trying to try it out, trial version, whatever, I would go and check the provider's website. For example, Intuit does offer trial versions of QuickBooks Online that you could try out directly with them and then come back and request either plus or advanced, depending on which one you'd want stuff like that. Um, you just want to make sure that you're very confident about what you're checking out with. 
um, since there is a lot of times no refunds allowed. <clears throat> Um, something to keep in mind is I did post it earlier in the chat is you will see some products that are called access to discounted rates. If you see that, that does mean that you are going to be paying TechSoup an admin fee to confirm your eligibility for the discount. You're then going to pay the provider directly for that um, service uh, or subscription. For example, Creative Cloud we talked about earlier, Adobe Creative Cloud, it's a flat discount for all the years. Um, it used to be different where it'd start with 1% discount in the beginning and then a different one years after, but right now it's the same all the years. Um, and on the product page, it will detail what you pay to TechSoup and then what the discounted rate is that you pay to Adobe directly. Um, so always keep an eye out for those um, title, the product name that has access to discounted rate it will have a little bit of nuances and not just a one-time fee or an annual fee like some of our other products. Awesome. Uh, next slide, please. Awesome. So as I was talking about, you know, you see the subscription details, you'll see that it has different information than the description tab. Um, for example, it's got continuing service after one year. So it does break that down on how to um, access your renewals, uh, start dates, um, system requirements, things along those lines. Next slide, please. So um, say you have are having some issues with your product, you're trying to update your account, you've got some additional questions, best place to start is at our help um, by clicking the help button to go to our TechSoup support. Uh, that's where all of our FAQ and articles are to help you self-serve on our website and self-serve with different products and offers. We're constantly in there making updates, adding information, making sure that it's all up to date and relevant to what our members are trying to do and common questions that we hear from them. Next slide, please. Perfect. So once you get into the TechSoup support, um, you'll see that there will be a search bar. You could search in there. Um, you'll be able to click on different categories. You can also scroll down to the promoted articles. So great place to start here. And we do actually have a Microsoft support um, that you'll see listed in there as well. We just made that change recently. Um, and so that has its own whole, Microsoft's got its own support section with all of its own support articles, and we just did an audit on them. So if you're interested in Microsoft, highly recommend checking that out. Um, <clears throat> TechSoup support's got mostly our more generic, general um, topics. That's going to have, you know, getting started with TechSoup, account management. Um, I put in a rule, uh, rules and eligibility. I put a link in that earlier in the Zoom chat um, when we were talking about eligibility. Um, so lots of great resources here to check out. And I do recommend just kind of poking around just, you know, for your own edification, or if you've got some specific questions, go and see um, if you've got information in there. Next slide, please. So Nick kind of mentioned this at the beginning, but just kind of want to reiterate here that customer service at TechSoup, we are not IT professionals. Um, we are not fully trained on every single product and service that's out there. We have, as we, we've kind of seen, we've got a lot of partners. Each one has set up their own individual nonprofit program with their own offers. We've got hundreds of different products and services. Our team, you know, we're a nonprofit as well. We have our own limited resources. Um, our team can't possibly be trained on all the products and services out there to provide in-depth support. We definitely have some general information. We've got some general troubleshooting for a lot of things. Um, we can always escalate issues up to our program manager who will then reach out to the partner um, for support, things along those lines, you know, we can't assist with. But if you're looking for a detailed walkthrough of downloading and installing Office, um, I would contact Microsoft support. Their team members are trained to provide the support for the products. It's the same product that's on the retail or commercial market. It's just been discounted, donated. It's, you know, it's just been made affordable for our nonprofit members. So that's something to keep in mind. Really good idea to go to the, per to the company providing the product to get product support. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so, You've looked at all of our resources. You've read all the product page information. You're you're still confused. You still have questions. You've got something that's just not working. You're locked out of your account. Stuff along those lines. Um, that's when you can reach out to TechSoup Customer Service. Uh, we do have this link on our Contact Us page. It will take you to TechSoup Support, where we have a detailed 
how to contact us. Um, this was also just updated to include some screenshots of how to access the help bubble in the bottom right corner, and then also access our live chat. It has it did change this month, so something to keep in mind is if you've contacted us before, you still might want to go and double check that how to article so that you can easily access the live chat. Um, we do put our hours of operation here. We do put upcoming holidays. For example, we were closed on Monday for Labor Day. Things along those lines are listed there. So I do recommend going and checking that article before you contact us um, on the live chat. Um, we do only currently have live chat as an option. Um, it's to best serve our members and make sure that we're kind of streamlining where our contacts are coming from. Um, it can be busy some days. It can take 30 minutes to an hour to get in touch with somebody. Um, we just ask everyone to be patient, stay on the chat, maybe type something in there just to keep it active. And um, and you will speak to a, a, a real person. We don't use AI to communicate with our members once you've been connected to a representative. You'll get some prompts at the beginning where it's kind of like with Amazon or any other website you go to, it'll be like, what do you need help with? You type something in, it will give you some suggestions. And if, and if you need help, you can say, get in touch. And then that will connect you to a real person that you'll be working with. So just want to really assure folks that you have a rep to work with and it's not AI. Next slide, please. Perfect. Again, these screenshots are on that uh, TechSoup support article. So I won't go over these too much more, but you should be seeing a help bubble at the bottom. If you don't see a help bubble, it's almost always because there's an issue with you accepting all of our cookies for the website. You have to accept cookies to see this bubble. Um, you also might have some uh, spam or pop-up window blockers that are blocking that widget from popping up. So um, highly recommend going to our uh, TechSoup support article about troubleshooting that. It is linked in the how to contact a TechSoup customer service. Next slide, please. I believe this should be my last one here. Oh, nope, that was my last one. So folks, I'm all wrapped up. Uh, TechSoup support is here. Um, we are currently taking live chat. So if you, after this, decide that you want to contact us and you didn't get Kevin's email that he's been putting in there, um, we are available until 3.30 p.m. today for live chat if you want to test that out. Thank Great. you so much, Thank Nick. you so much, Kelly. Um, and yeah, now bringing forward uh, Kevin Mulhall, another colleague of ours here at TechSoup. Uh, Kevin and the customer success team are not focused so much on like your relationship with TechSoup so much as they are your relationship with technology more broadly and, uh, you know, helping you make the most of what you've got is I think the best way to say it. That's absolutely spot on, Nick. Um, so we are kind of like the in-between of in-between. Um, we are an extremely small team. Um, there's There are six of us. Um, there is myself and another colleague that work specifically on what you see here. So kind of reverse engineering the experience um, the, and the process and the supports and some of the other things. Um, our team exists to kind of be there, um, not just to deliver what's on the, the slide here, and I'll touch on those uh, for a second, in a second, but... Um, when you're going through the process of scoping it, looking at um, like a house, for example, you're going to have questions and you're going to want to get into contact and you'll have that internal checklist. Our team kind of exists at a fundamental level to be there like for as that checklist, like for product, for services and, and for other supports. Um, a lot of times what I've discovered in five and a half years is that um, these things can be answered actually in advance of the purchase process. Um, and that's where we really shine. We're there to kind of get into the weeds a little bit more because we do have Microsoft, AWS, Google certifications, et cetera. Um, and while we're not a managed provider, which I brought out in the chat, we don't do full, we're not a full service. We do have partners, as Nick mentioned. Um, we are kind of there to just be that advocate, if you will. Um, so what specifically do we do in the support that we do? This is delivered uh, in, in engagements that are um, um, general day-to-day -day ones. Um, we will engage on um, where there are specific stated needs around products or services without question. But for like the day-to-day -day and some of the value-added stuff that you see here, uh, th this is a part of quad membership. Um, so some of the things that we do, for example, are full technology audits. 
as Nick mentioned, there's a gazillion software. I could probably name 50 softwares that specifically serve the function or purpose of, of CRM, right? Like, how do I comb through that? Don't comb through that. Let us comb through that. Let us identify your needs and move from there. So things like requests for proposals and scopes of work. Um, somebody had mentioned in the chat um, uh, and actually had sub subsequently contacted me about needing some service supports. Let us intake that process first so that the I's and T's are done so that you are not purchasing, as Nick mentioned brilliantly, you're not purchasing things you don't need. And I've uh, unfortunately seen scenarios where there's been things like laptops that have been overspecced, which have resulted in um, quotes that were well beyond what they should have been. We're here for that type of support. Um, grants and fundraising, that's obviously something that's a big deal. That conversation happens on the regular within the quad community. We're happy to plug in there because one of the things that uh, technology does sometimes uh, imply, well, it does always imply is that there is either a time or a cost, a financial cost or both. So if fundraising and or strategies for revenue around planning your life cycle, your IT life cycle is not there. We love to talk about that and we love to help develop that. Things like developing, enhancing like your network. If you're a new small um, organization, our team works actively in the various communities where we're in. I am uh, hyperactive in the Dallas-Fort Worth area because that's where I live. Um, and there are resources that not only that are available at TechSoup, but then potentially outside the scope of us um, that if we have the opportunity to connect you directly to, we do. And then again, to reiterate, non-managed IT services. We uh, we do not do like end-to-end -end support. We won't do your MDM like enrollment. Like we can advise on the solutions and, and provide you some basic um, uh, support around that for the, the onboarding process, but that the direct um, why I don't like to use the word handholding, but that's kind of what it is. Um, we, we don't do that. We have partners that do that. As I mentioned in the chat again, uh, we have several preferred partners for those types of supports. We also have the consultant connection lister, which I have um, access and, and work with the team that also manages that. So if there is something that comes up where like, hey, we want maybe somebody more local um, or we need like this particular niche area, um, we're able to identify that through the engagement and intake process. So that's what my team does in a nutshell. We kind of, again, sit in the middle. Hopefully this is straightforward. I've already heard from several of you by email, which is great. So I um, look forward to, uh, to connecting with you guys. Thank you so much, Kevin. Um, and uh, thank you, everybody who's been on this call. We're at um, 51 minutes past the hour. So um, now's the time to wrap it up and let you go. Uh, but again, uh, thank you for choosing to be part of the nonprofit world. And um, again, you know, working to make your communities and and your country and, and the, the world better. Um, I think TechSoup can be super helpful. Um, and uh, again, if this is the first time you're really understanding or exploring some of the capacity that we have to support you, I want to really encourage you to now spend some time on that website, take a look at what's available to you that might be helpful and get in touch. Um, and then uh, thank you, Kelly and uh, Kevin and Aretha again for uh, being together today. Um, and uh, Aretha will be sharing out to all of you uh, after this webinar ends, uh, an email with a, with a link to the deck. Again, there, there are live links there to the things that I shared. Um, and uh, please feel free to go ahead through that stuff as well. Um, and uh, with that said, thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Um, and I appreciate you spending your time with TechSoup this morning.